Beneath the restless waters of Bass Strait, between Victoria and Tasmania, lies a forgotten world, a vanished land known as the Bassian Plain. For tens of thousands of years during the last ice age, this vast landscape was not sea, but land. A sweeping expanse of grasslands, wetlands, and granite hills where rivers flowed, animals grazed, and people lived. It was a vital land bridge that connected Tasmania to the mainland. But more than that, it was a thriving ecosystem and a homeland in its own right. A place as real and rich in life as any part of Australia today. Only the mountain peaks of the Bassian Plain remain above the waves as islands. The Ferno Group and King Island were once highlands rising over a coastal plain. Up until about 10,000 to 8,000 years ago, this now submerged landscape connected Tasmania to mainland Australia, forming a land bridge teeming with life. The Bassian Plain supported a mosaic of grasslands, wetlands and sparse woodlands where humans and animals roamed. This video explores the geological and environmental history of that vanished plain, painting a picture of what the landscape looked and felt like before the sea claimed it at the end of the last ice age. This is the story of the forgotten Bassian Plain. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, hit the bell icon and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. And if you enjoy it, consider sharing it around. Bass Strait, the waterway that now separates Tasmania from the Australian mainland, is geologically a shallow depression in the continental shelf. Its average depth is only about 60 metres, with a maximum around 85 metres, a clue that it hasn't always been filled with ocean. Over the past several million years, global sea levels have repeatedly risen and fallen with ice ages, alternately submerging and exposing the Bassian Plain. During glacial periods, when vast amounts of water were locked up in ice, sea level dropped enough to reveal a continuous land bridge. The most recent emergence began roughly 43,000 years ago, and by the end of the last ice age, around 20,000 years ago, sea level was 125 to 130 metres lower than today, fully exposing a broad plain between Victoria and Tasmania. Geologically, this plain was framed by higher ground to the east and west, the eastern side was a granite highland known as the Bassian Rise, which now underlies islands like Flinders Island and the ridges of Wilson Promontory. To the west, another uplifted block, the King Island High, ran through what is now King Island. Between these uplands lay the Low Bass Basin, essentially a shallow bowl in the centre of Bass Strait. This basin became the heartland of the Bassian Plain. As long as the ocean remained above the basin's rim, the area stayed dry land. Any rivers flowing into it would form lakes or marshes. In effect, the Bassian Plain was a flat, low-lying valley floor surrounded by gentle rises and occasional hills that once were coastal headlands. It was into this landscape that humans and animals ventured as the Ice Age lowered the seas. At the last glacial maximum, around 20,000 years ago, the Bassian Plain stretched out as a windswept expanse of land. Granite hills and the ridges of the eastern side of the plain jutted up as islands of rock marking what are now the Ferno Islands and Wilson's Promontory. In today's terms, the dry land extended from Wilson's Promontory across all the Bass Strait to northeast Tasmania, forming a continuous bridge between the two landmasses. This was not a tiny land bridge, but a big country in its own right, as one researcher put it. Though today it's hidden beneath the waves of Bass Strait, the geology of the Bassian Plain is surprisingly well understood thanks to offshore drilling, seismic surveys, and detailed geological studies of the surrounding landmasses. Far from being a featureless valley, this drowned land was underlain by a complex mixture of ancient granite, sedimentary basins, and metamorphic ridges, each with its own story and mineral potential. At the heart of the plain lies the Bass Basin, a broad low-lying sedimentary trough that formed during the Cretaceous period, around 100 million years ago, as Australia began to rift away from Antarctica. This basin filled with up to 10 kilometers of sediment over tens of millions of years. These sediments include alternating layers of sandstone, shale, siltstone and coal-like lignite, deposited in river deltas, floodplains and shallow seas. To the east, the Bassian Rise forms the granitic backbone of the plain. This region is geologically continuous, with the granite belts of northeastern Tasmania and the Ferno Islands. Made up of mostly coarse-grained Devonian biotite granite, and surrounding metamorphic rocks like schist and phyllite. These types of rocks are significant because in exposed parts of Tasmania, 
Similar granites are associated with tin and gold deposits, often formed by hydrothermal activity along fault zones. To the west, the King Island High marks a structural ridge composed of much older rocks, ancient Precambrian and Cambrian formations that include high-grade metamorphic rocks like granulite and gneiss. Gold and tungsten has been found on King Island, and the submerged rocks hint at a more rugged, mineral-rich terrain beneath what is now King Island and the Western Bass Strait. Together, these regions formed a geologically diverse landscape beneath the Pleistocene grasslands of the Bassian Plain. Surface soils and outcrops likely varied widely, from sandy coastal sediments and dune fields to exposed granite ridges and weathered ironstones. While there is no direct archaeological evidence of mineral exploitation on the plain itself, it is reasonable to assume that Aboriginal people used the landscape's natural resources. Exposed quartz veins, granite outcrops, or iron-rich weathered rocks may have been the sources of stone tools or ochre pigments. From a tectonic perspective, the Bassian Plain sits within the broader Tasman Fold Belt, a Paleozoic mountain-building zone that shaped much of eastern and southeastern Australia. The plain formed as part of a rift system that includes the Otway, Sorrel, and Bass Basins, created as Australia split from Antarctica and the Southern Ocean began to form. This stretching and thinning of the crust produced fault blocks, sediment-filled grabens, and potential zones for hydrothermal mineralization. In short, the Bassian Plain wasn't just a flat land bridge. It was underlain by a rich and complex geological history. Its drowned basins hold gas and coal, its ridges conceal granite-borne mineralization, and its ancient rocks hint at a deep tectonic past. Though now lost beneath the sea, the rocks of the Bassian Plain speak of a land that was once geologically alive, and potentially very rich in the very materials that shaped both the landscape and the life around it. The climate of this exposed plain was markedly colder and drier than today. The world was in an ice age, so average temperatures in southeast Australia were several degrees lower, with Tasmania's highlands even supporting small glaciers and permafrost in places. At lower elevations like the Bassian Plain, there was no ice sheet, but the environment was periglacial, characterised by cold winters, frost and fierce winds. Rainfall was reduced, and for stretches of time, the region became quite arid. In these especially cold, dry episodes, loose sand from riverbeds and exposed coastal sediments were blown into dune fields, forming long sand ridges across parts of the plain. Yet the Bassian Plain was not an unrelenting desert. Shallow streams and rivers still flowed across its surface in wetter seasons, meandering through grassy valleys towards the central lake. Pollen records and other environmental evidence indicate that much of southeastern Australia at this time was covered in open steppe vegetation, dominated by grasses and daisies rather than dense forests. In fact, contrary to earlier theories that Tasmania might have been cloaked in impassable rainforest, the evidence now shows that northwestern Tasmania and the adjoining Bassian Plain were largely an expanse of sweeping grasslands. Scattered among these grasslands were patches of heathland and pockets of woodland in more sheltered or well-watered spots. Overall tree cover was limited. Sparse eucalypts and wattles may have clustered in favourable areas, but vast vistas of open grass and shrubland were the norm. One ecologist imagines it as a well-watered plain despite the chill, a landscape with ample wetlands and moisture to support life even if it was cold. It was a land of big skies and broad horizons, likely frosty at times, but rich with grass, flowers and seasonal marshes glinting under the pale Ice Age sun. The Bassian Plains' mix of grasslands, wetlands and sparse forest provided habitat for a variety of wildlife. Pleistocene Australia still harboured many of the animals familiar to us today, along with some now extinct megafauna. And on this land bridge, species moved freely between the mainland and Tasmania. Herds of large kangaroos grazed the open meadows, browsing on tough Ice Age grasses. Emus stalked across the steppe in great numbers, a fact confirmed by archaeology. Excavations in the Ferno Islands, which were high ground on the plain, uncovered thick layers of emu eggshells in ancient Aboriginal campsites, indicating that emus were once abundant on the Bassian Plain. Wombats and wallabies would have been common in the scrub and dune country, and their bones have indeed been found in cave deposits from this era. Around the marshes and Lake Bass, as the central lake is sometimes called, waterbirds flourished. Swans, ducks, pelicans and other waterfowl formed large populations attracted by the extensive shallows. 
The well-watered swales and lagoons of the plain might have buzzed with insects and frogs in summer, and seasonally attracted migratory birds. One can imagine thylacines, Tasmanian tigers, trotting over the grasslands, shadowing the movement of grazing kangaroos, or Tasmanian devils scavenging on carrion. Both species were present in Tasmania and the mainland in late Pleistocene times. Perhaps small bands of megafauna, like giant wombats or giant kangaroos, still lingered in refuges on the plains in the earlier millennia of human arrival, although most of Australia's megafauna had vanished by the height of the last glacial maximum. The overall picture is of a productive, if often chilly, savanna, windswept tussock grass hills, heath blooms on the higher granite ridges, and life gathering around the reliable water sources. The plain was a vital ecological corridor, allowing mainland species to colonise Tasmania and vice versa, a fact reflected today in the shared wildlife – wombats, kangaroos, devils, etc. – that Tasmania retained after the land bridge disappeared. This once lost land was not only home to animals, it was also home to people. Indigenous Australians discovered and settled the Bassian Plain early in their history on the continent. Archaeological and genetic evidence shows that people had reached Tasmania by at least 40,000 years ago and possibly even earlier. They likely came southward in waves as land access opened. The Bassian Land Bridge was not merely a transient route for these peoples, as Professor Chris Johnson notes, calling it a land bridge understates its significance. It wasn't a crossing, it was a country, he explains. A homeland in itself where generations of people lived, hunted and built their lives. Recent scientific research has even detected human environmental impacts, such as burning or vegetation change, on the Bassian Plain beginning about 41,600 years ago, hinting at the very early human presence on the landscape. What was life like for people on the Lost Plain? From the archaeological clues, we know they were adept hunter-gatherers making the most of the cool, open environment. After the last glacial maximum passed, the world began to warm. The ice sheets melted and sea levels rose, slowly at first and then in rapid pulses. On the Bassian Plain, people would have witnessed their world changing in real time. Around 8,000 to 15,000 years ago, shallow bays and tidal marshes formed at the edges of the plain as the seas crept back in. The surviving land bridge shrank to a narrower corridor in the east, perhaps a chain of marshy islands and peninsulas near present-day Wilson's Promontory and the Ferno region. Finally, somewhere between 14,000 and 12,000 years ago, the last dry connection between Tasmania and Australia was broken as the waters surged through. The Bassian Plain, which had existed for millennia, was gradually swallowed by the sea. By 9,000 to 8,000 years ago, the sea reached roughly its current level. Tasmania was now an island, home to a population of Aboriginal Tasmanians cut off from mainland Australia. The fertile Bassian Plain was no more. Only the scattered mountaintops remained as islands in the New Bass Strait. Today the Bassian Plain lies hidden under the waves, but it is far from forgotten. For scientists, it offers a fascinating case study of climate change and human resilience, a real-world Atlantis that shows how ecosystems and communities adapt to dramatic sea level rise. Marine archaeologists and geologists continue to study the seabed, hoping to find submerged archaeological sites or landscape features from that lost world. Standing on a Tasmanian beach today, gazing north across the Bass Strait, it's awe-inspiring to imagine that not so long ago, in Ice Age time, an entire country lay between here and the mainland. Grasslands ran to the horizon, where there is now open sea. Kangaroos hopped and emus trotted in what are now white-capped waves. Though submerged and silent beneath the strait, the Bassian Plains' legacy endures in the biology, stories and collective memory of Australia. It is a sunken chapter of the land's history, one that we can now begin to visualise through scientific discoveries and indigenous knowledge, bringing this lost Ice Age world back to life in our imagination. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.